Oh, y'all have been on my ass about this show, man. I've been I've had so many emails from people asking me, Corey, have you seen you? Yeah, every day, man. <laughs> I'm looking at myself every day with delight. <laughs> half, the, half, the cloud, half the time I ain't got this many, this, this many clothes on when I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, I love me. I mean, I mean, I was, have you seen you? You got damn right I have. But we're talking about the Netflix show, You. And a lot of people are saying, man, I, you know, you say you like things that are uncomfortable. You like things that make you feel awkward. Well, boy, have we got the show for you. Turns out you got this story of a guy who he's handsome, he's charming. Uh, you know, look, he ain't got the best job in the world, but he does well with his money and he's very modest. I mean, you know, girls is looking for a nice guy like that, right? You know, all these girls talking about all I want is a nice guy who cares about nothing but me. When he looks at me, he sees nothing else. Be careful what you wish for. And this guy <laughs> is that guy. Except that when he sees you and he sees nothing else, that's going to be 24-7. <laughs> he's going to be looking at you when you sleep. He's going to be looking through your window when you don't think he's there. He's probably looking at you taking a shit somewhere. Got a stalker on your hands. Going through your phone. That's the one reason why I can only say you don't want no nice guy. A guy's too nice to me. He's looking at your ass when he shouldn't be. <laughs> If I just keep being the perfect boyfriend, you'll realize I'm not a maybe. I'm the one. All right, Martin, before we get started, I have to let everybody know that this video is approved and sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. And yes, Martin, I've talked about Dollar Shave Club before, but I'm going to keep talking about it until you learn, Martin. I'm ready. I, I lost the beard. I'm ready for some smooth dollar shave. They are taking care of that whole body of yours, Martin. Really? Oh, yeah. Look around, Martin. Look around because you know what? How do they do that? Well, they got one of their starter kits right here. What's in that kit? See, well, you can see, first of all, welcome to your better bathroom. Martin, it just got a lot cooler up in here. And, Martin, let me tell you what's up in here. Now, I told you about how they take care of everything on you. And I'll go ahead and start out with the obvious. You're still going to get... The executive razor, Martin, they'll also send you the refillable cartridges right here. I want to let everybody know that I tried shaving once, and I still use the shave butter. No, that shave butter is the best. Put it on and your face, spread it on toast. You know, <laughs> nothing's better. <laughs> now that we got the face covered, you know what? You can take care of your hair and your scalp with their wondrous shampoo right here, hydrating shampoo right here. You got sage black pepper. We also have here... The body cleanser, the hydrating body cleanser. Uh, you have calming amber and lavender right here, Martin. They want to keep your teeth nice and white, your breath always smelling fresh. And that is why they have the Superbra toothbrush right here. They ain't going to do you like that. They ain't just going to give you a toothbrush and no toothpaste. Yeah, I can't do anything with a dry toothbrush. Yeah, I mean, well, you can. We won't mention it here, but <laughs> they don't want you to do that, Martin. They want to go ahead and make sure you got all the tools to keep your mouth fresh. And they got the Superbra toothpaste right here, Martin. And this one is Peppermint Kick. Join the club at one of these starter sets that you see right here for only $5. And then after that, get restocked boxes sent to you for regular price every month. You want in on this exclusive deal? Of course you do. And it's very easy to do. Just type in dollarshaveclub.com forward slash double toasted. See how easy that is? I shouldn't have to repeat it, but I'm going to do it anyway. dollarshaveclub.com forward slash double toasted. Merry Christmas, Martin, for 2019. And thank you all. And remember that this video has been approved and sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Now, you know, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, trailer for you. And then we'll elaborate on the series a little bit more. As Martin and myself, we come in and give uh, a review about this. And also, when it, that uh, discussion is done, I'm going to I'm gonna recommend some movies that are similar to this in a certain way. Probably not even the way you, that you're thinking about it. But I have some other recommendations for all you people out there who enjoyed this series here. You have questionable taste in friends. And a guy needs to protect himself. She's lucky she has me. Heck rarely knows what's best for her. It's funny that a lot of people are talking about this now because before it was on Netflix, this was actually a, a, a lifetime, lifetime show. Yeah. yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't know that because a lot of people had been talking about it and I saw like the date uh, going back to like uh, August and September of twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. But see that's the thing with, with, with this being on lifetime. 
because you know that lifetime you don't come this hard you know exactly <laughs> you know <laughs> it's it's always a woman in trouble usually the same four actresses over and over oh yeah yeah and, yeah and they don't come this hard and there's nothing really funny or even smart about stuff yeah when you think of a lifetime like you know like, like you, you even wonder like, where the lt even get this money because they, they usually don't even have enough they, they uh -huh. usually have enough money to make something look this good it's usually somebody filming something in somebody's house in the suburbs or some actress or actor who you know they 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 are e level now they ain't even d c e right, b right. you know they they are uh they are people that just you know they just trying to stay relevant in these things mm -hmm. um because the funny thing about it, you watch this show, show there's clearly breaks for commercials. Yes. Yeah, that's why, that's, that's another thing why I looked it up, because it stops. That's like, is Netflix is Netflix, is Netflix about to pull commercials on here? Because I was getting mad. Like, look, I pay for this shit, all right? I thought a commercial was about to come up. You know? <laughs> they they have sex through here. They are talking, you know, they use, they use uh, you know, they say fuck shit and all kind of things. I really, this must have been like some BET after dark shit for, <laughs> for, for Lifetime. Lifetime. Yeah, yeah, Lifetime after dark. Because before I ever watched the show, I saw that preview, and I thought, well, this looks like Fifty Shades of Grey if Christian Grey wasn't rich. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And before it was actually on Lifetime, it was a book from Carolyn Kepnes. Uh, you can see it's a success. I mean, Stephen King says, Sh -sh scared the shit out of me. Yeah, he says that favorite <laughs> I know, thing. He, just, he probably didn't even say that. I've read so many books. Oh, I mean, used to read so many books just because he endorsed them. I was like, well, he likes it. I know. It must be good. Hey, Stephen King, can you endorse my book? Scared the fuck out of me. It's a children's book, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's called My Pee and My Poo. I know. That's <laughs> terrifying, ain't it? I love this for one simple thing, and that is telling these women out there, for all of y'all who were blinded by all these billions this man has, mm -hmm. all these jets in that penthouse, you know, all these luxurious trips and dinners and everything, pull all that shit away and the motherfucker's crazy. I had a rough start in life. You should steer clear of me. Got me hoping. You just crazy, cra crazy. Yeah, just falling out of nowhere. <laughs> I, I love this because this is, this, is like, this is like this book is the, uh, this book and the, and the show is the anti Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, man, look, I don't care what this dude has. He's fucking nuts. Uh -huh. That's why I don't like that, man, because it was it really did tell these women who were looking at this as something that was all women empowerment because it gives us the power of our sexuality. How does being tied up in a dungeon waiting for a crazy motherfucker to let you go, how is that empowering? All those movies, the, the, tri the 50 Shade trilogy, uh -huh. it is about a guy who is not normal. Uh, the, a guy who's, he. the only thing is he has enough money to to just have a thread of sanity to keep him from crossing yeah. over. Because he can afford to like he can afford to woo women. Yeah, there's a certain amount of money you have where nobody tells you no or says, hey man, I think you ought to not do that. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting up there, you know I'd wipe your ass for you. <laughs> That's insane. This here is showing you that dudes like that who make you the center of their world, the things that a lot of people think they want mm -hmm. is telling you that is not normal you know what i, lo I love they told like they chose like a really cute uh, a thin mm -hmm. almost non-threatening guy yeah not not non-threatening handsome urbane he's 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 funny he's got a good personality Pin badgley plays joe and joe has every and, and, and you know what and what's great about this is that uh it shows how if you tweak just a a couple of elements, two or three elements, how you can you you can have something in one genre and just shift it over to another. Mm -hmm. Because what you were looking at here, this is a horror movie. Oh yeah. At, <laughs> at, at you know, at least a dark thriller. A thriller, yeah. Yeah, no, sure. you're looking at a horror movie, but they've taken, you know, what they've taken the uh uh the they, they've taken the scares and replaced them with romance, charm. Uh, humor. humor yeah they you, and so what you what you look you don't even realize like what I love what, another thing I loved about this is that I I heard people talking about it but it still caught me off guard mm -hmm. in the beginning because in the beginning it really is like you are you're watching the beginning of a, of a romance oh yeah a, ro a romantic comedy a, a dramedy a, ro a straight romance oh uh, if you go in cold and you watch this in the beginning it will really throw you off and it will actually kind of it'll even it'll it will even give you like a warm bubbly feeling as you're watching as when uh the girl that he meets beck 
who is played by Elizabeth, uh, what is it, Law? Lel? Elizabeth Lel, who, uh, who is great in here too. I'll, I'll talk about her performance in a little bit. But when they first meet, it's like the meeting that you see, not only in movies like this, but a lot of times, if you're smooth enough, in real life. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's very relatable, man. This, this movie plays off of a lot of things that we see, we take for granted. Uh, uh, tropes from, from movies. Yes. Uh, so many of the romantic comedy tropes and the ones that people play in their heads. Oh, it should be like this. It'll be a meet cute like in the movies. Yeah. And and he'll be that perfect guy like this. And this this whole fantasy you write, this this narrative, and it's like, uh, it, no, this is not good. This guy is not socially awkward. No, he actually, yeah. the, what's great about it is that they build it up as a romance and you think you're about to watch a romance film because this guy doesn't take somebody to be socially awkward or sitting in the mm -hmm. corner talking, hey, can I play with your hair? You know, it's like this dude is actually, he knows the right things to say all the time because, and I don't get, you know, this, I don't, you know, they tell you later, but the guy, he's, he's observant enough to actually say the right things. Okay, I'm going for it. Good, you won't regret it. I better not. Paula Fox, nice. You know, she was uh, Courtney Love. Get your ass. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will kill you. <laughs> you get your the fuck up, man. You smiled, laughed at my jokes, told me your name, asked for mine. She read her number on there? I swear to God, if you don't get your ass back <laughs> in that office. <laughs> Shit, and they think I'm the creepy one. Right. <laughs> he just been behind the mirror the whole time, the glass. <laughs> and that's the funny thing. If that other guy had been doing any stuff he did, he'd have been labeled a creep, and they would have all stayed away from him <laughs> and talked shit about him, and, and this movie would never have progressed. If that guy had the same narration uh -huh. that this cute guy uh -huh. right here did, then would it be, yeah, it would have been creepy. Uh -huh. To me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'd like to get your input on this. Uh -huh. uh, the, the, the scariest thing about this to me is not Joe, but it's the way that if you just frame something a certain way, people will accept uh, people accept that narrative. Um, Joe is Joe's mind. Joe is actually he, he feels like he, he's owed this because of the things that we said. He's very charming. He's handsome. Uh, and because of that, that makes me more scared of normal people who look at him and accept him uh as as the norm because that's what we're taught to accept you know with and, and we see it going on today too you know joe is uh you know joe is uh uh that average white male who's good looking enough to be non-threatening mm -hmm. and i think that this being out right now is a perfect time for that because for some reason man i don't know what it is and, and and it ain't no reason for it to happen because this dude's been infamous for years. We know what we know the dirt this guy's done, and for some reason, this guy's becoming somewhat of another uh, another heartthrob out there. Hey, Mr. Jeff Bundy, I've never spoken to anybody about this. I am looking for an opportunity to tell the story as best I can. You know that's another Netflix property. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> with conversations with the killer. Sure, and. A lot of these women now are starting to actually fall for Ted Bundy. But that's again. that's that's nothing new. There's, you've always had women fall for these serial killers, like Richard Ramirez. Yeah, you know he he got mar yeah, married married, uh, and and he got married. He had his choice because he had lots of women writing him love letters and and marriage proposals. Yeah, this happens with these killers. I don't know if it's just their status of being somewhat famous, but it always happens. And out of all those guys, Ted Bundy was known as the handsome dude killer from the very beginning. That's always been his thing. If you look up every time there's been a biopic, usually on television of him, look at the actors they get to play him. Oh, you know what? No, you're right. And But I'm saying that there's more now of a resurgence of Ted Bundy. And where yeah, these, and, that, that's what I'm surprised and, by, and, this resurgence of Ted Bundy. And it's not just all these crazy chicks, you know, these like these these murder fans out there that, 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 that uh, that love, you know, the, the serial killers. It's it's kind of like the media is putting it out there uh, that we're supposed to like take this guy in some in some sort of superstar way. They got that movie out there. That's why I was mad about. It. They done villainized my little sweetie man, my Zachy Poo. Is he <laughs> playing Ted Bundy? He now? is playing Ted Bundy, and I and listen. No, <laughs> and I don't think Ted Bundy is that good looking. Like like people say, he just does. He doesn't look crazy. 
But he looks like a normal, he, somewhat handsome guy. Yeah, and they got, but they've got Zach Efron to play him in this movie, uh, extremely wicked, shockingly vile and evil. That guy's been staring at you all night. What do you say we get out of here? What is it about this guy that will shock you beyond your worst nightmare? You know, they, it's yeah, uh, you'd have been dead in a motherfucker. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. You know, this this is a. Uh, you know, you got the, the it, there's a controversy about this movie where they're talking about man. If you watch, because if you watch the whole trailer, it's making it seem like it's some like some like some caper or something. Like he's yeah. about to do a heist, not yeah. murder like thirty women, yeah. possibly more. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that's that's why it's a perfect time to have the series you out there because series it, it, it series is, is addressing that whole thing of oh Siri thought I was talking to her I, the girl I ain't talking to you go on because <laughs> I wonder if the screen just went blank this is addressing that at the perfect time now when Ted Bundy's becoming somewhat of a trend again mm -hmm. this is saying you know let's let's talk about this whole thing of the the average to good looking white male not being threatening when they're being, a, you know, and I'm not saying, look, I'm not talking about white people at all, but you know, just because we don't look at that group, there's a lot of shit going on in that group that's taken as the norm. Yeah. And when, this, when this, you're not being looked at, you can get away with a lot. Yeah. While we're looking at terrorists, white nationalists are like, you know, coming up while you're looking at somebody like this guy in the background, what is, you know, who, 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 who's not as good looking as this guy, who's the creep on a normal every day that, that, that girls are coming into the store. This guy is the real one that's doing all the, the shady shit. I like that this is addressing that right now, and I think that they're doing it in a really cool way because one of the things that this series wants to do, it wants to challenge everybody. I it mean, really does. It challenged me on that. Well, same here because I knew from the preview what he was all about, and this first episode, it tells you very clearly what he's all about. And I was, I, I was curious about the show, but I wasn't sure I was going to watch it. A lot of people were like, I don't know, we can't stop watching it. And it took my daughter going like, I don't know, Dad, I watched this. It's pretty good. You got to watch. And I was like, all right, for you. Yeah. I was struck by how, <laughs> I was not prepared for how funny it was. Yeah. That's what got me first. And I was like, you know, it's going to be fun to watch this show because it's all in his voice. And we've been prepped for decades now with characters like Tony Soprano and Walter White mm -hmm. who are not good people, and yet we follow them. They've been our heroes. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So, yeah, this guy's a stalker. He's a creep. Uh He's not the hero, but he is the narrator, and he is charming and funny. I don't want to say this out loud, but I'm kind of rooting for him at times. Well, you do that because... But then again, shit happens. It reminds me, like, mm, no. Well, they make it very easy to root for him because, again, it's, it's a complex show. If it you is. Seen, a lot of people have seen it already, but if you haven't seen it, it's a complex show where they, they, they you know, the guy's not completely evil in right. fact he's he's he, got a good heart i mean yeah he's he, yeah he does some good things this man i mean you know if you let if you <laughs> let your guard down you become endeared to i mean the man feeds the children i know you know, know. he, he he's goes trying, home he, he's trying to protect a, a an abused child yeah he lives next door to a kid named paco whose parents are just messed up and you know he sees paco out on the doorstep and he's just kind of like you know what boy take my sandwich from me i don't need it why are you coming home shut the door for you You're is everything cool in there yeah, Mom and Ron are just talking. All for one and one for all. Well, you happy to get that sandwich. Stop! <laughs> 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 you, you might be crazy as fuck, Joe, but I'm hungry as fuck. <laughs> Um, you know, oh, by the way, don't ever, uh, you know, uh, I'm not endorsing creeps or uh, trying to help them out, but don't ever tell your business to a kid. That's oh, the no. one thing I don't understand. I know. <laughs> they, I know. they will rat your ass <laughs> they up. Will. Men. They don't even know they're doing it. They, they don't, yeah, they don't even know they're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Joe. <laughs> I, asked for the, I asked the police for help. <laughs> I saw you in the backyard with that shovel. I thought you made yourself. <laughs> oh, kid. God damn it. <laughs> Thanks for the sandwich, Joe. <laughs> yeah, not only do they show that he, he has a good heart and he wants to do good things, mm -hmm. but you also get the contrast of the fact that the girl that he's in love with, that he's going after, at times she kind of sucks. She and, does, and, and even yeah. even more than that, her friends, especially one in particular, they're kind of awful. To the point where you're like, he's actually a positive influence in her life. Well, yeah, he's getting because she wants to be a writer. Yeah. he's getting he's getting back to write. Uh, you know, he's 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 exposing uh, her to the shallowness of her friends and and how they're a distraction to her career too. Yeah. You know, everything that he's advising this girl on is actually spot on because yeah, he gets that, to sit back and observe because right. he's a fucking sociopath. 
Right, yeah. And there's that point where you're like, well, this could all work out if he just hadn't done all that shit. If he's not if he <laughs> if wasn't he wasn't crazy. just crazy deep <laughs> down inside. Yeah. But I thought, at first I thought that was a problem for me because they make it too easy at times to root for him. As I said, man, and you know, when when the sociopath is the nicest person in the show, uh-huh. because that's what they do, man. You know, the, he's surrounded by people that are just bad, man. You know, they they are, they are the cheaters, are the shallow, the self centered. Like one person is a is a is an internet influencer, always taking pictures of herself. Mm-hmm. Another, is some sort of rich bitch who's just uh, you know she she loves to manipulate people with her money. Another girl is nothing about but you know just uh, the most shallow kind of sex, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and and sometimes these people might be as crazy as he is, might even be uh-huh. possibly ki- killers, uh-huh. except if you got to weigh it out, they have the shitty attitude. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, they, <laughs> believe it or not, they're kind of shittier people in certain ways. It's hard to, you know, at first I thought like, all right, you know what, now you're being way too manipulative because you're not challenging me because you're giving me too, uh, you, it, like if, if something, if, if, if Joe does something to get back at people, you're making me feel like, well, they had it coming. Uh, you know, and, and especially with Beck herself, when we say she's not good. She's she's she is as a girlfriend. She she would be horrible. She's yeah. She she is. I mean, hanging around people has just made her somewhat of a shallow person. As a girlfriend, she'd be horrible. She's not a bad person, right? You you get to see kind of like what has messed her up, but yeah, she's still like man. she she chooses like you know she's she's the one always talking about. I need a nice guy and chooses the, always the worst taste in man. Like this this guy right here, Lou Benji. Taylor, Lou Taylor Pucci, Benji. You might <laughs> I saw this guy, this actor. That is thumb, him. Thumbsucker. Yeah, from Thumbsucker. Yeah, that's okay. him. I kept thinking he reminded me of that guy, but I know I didn't. I wasn't sure it was him. I was like, man, I want to punch this guy so bad. But oh. what is it that's making me like not want to hurt him he that was, bad? He was funny though, even under the distress, being the douchiest of all douches. There's just still something funny about douche, that. bro. <laughs> not just a douche bag, a douche, bro. It's still, you know, and that's where they get you because it's like, man, look, these people are bad, but do they deserve no. to be? Look, we ain't gonna like make a concentration camp of douche bros, right, put them in cages right. and abuse them. Right. And that's when you start to see the ugly side of, because uh, that's first I said, man, they're really making it hard for me to. Uh, to, to be against Joe, but there are moments that are truly disturbing with Joe, mm-hmm. even yeah. when it's funny. Because when they like, yeah, even when it's funny, it's still disturbing. When they like Benji up, it's just kind of like, okay, man, I'm I, the world needs less people like him. But I'm but not not this. But I'm not gonna do this. I didn't think too far ahead when I swung that mallet, so I did what I had to do to help you, Beck. And now there's an adult human male in the basement of this bookstore. Dairy. If I ate a peanut, I could die. It, like, Ooh. <laughs> it's something about this dude, man. I look, like he's a douche, bro. But I see hips just like this all the time. No. <laughs> I'm kind of used to it. I'm like, man, it, let, let, let the dude go by. You know, like, drop his ass off at a craft brewery somewhere. He'll be all right. They keep going back and forth between what's worse, who's worse. Uh-huh. Do I really should should I be rooting for? He's sick, but maybe I should be rooting for uh-huh, him here. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. man, it, it really does come down to. You have to, like, you can never, ever drop your guard with this show. No, you can't. <laughs> never. Do, yeah, you can never. Be, and, and, and again, it's not the show that's manipula- manipulating you. It's that character. You have, it, it gets everyone. I'm talking about these girls and Ted Bundy, but there were moments in here where I was like, okay, man, I, you know, I, I, fuck it. I like the guy. Yeah. So sue me. <laughs> you know, but, oh, I know. You're like, I don't want it to say, I don't want to say this out loud. But I like the guy. Oh, that thing that happened to him. Uh, and it doesn't help when you uh, see what he's been through to get to where he is. Uh-huh. Yeah. But but, I then, mean, but then he'll do something. You're like, man, I can't abide that. By the time we get to the end of this, you have to realize, like, this, that, again, this is a very sick individual that you're dealing with. And and by that point, there are very terrible things that have been done. And you, and some people, sad thing to me, that some people will still sit back and try to justify it because mm-hmm. he always has... He always has narration going on. Sure. If you didn't have the narration, it still might have you rooting for him. But seeing everything, hearing everything from his point of view, is always giving him a chance to explain. Uh huh. You don't ever want somebody to sit down like this and explain <laughs> this shit to you because you might actually be stupid enough to fall for it. And there were a couple of times I was peaches, man. Yeah. This girl, right? Here, Jesus, I, I couldn't stand this chick, man. Oh, I know. As anybody in here said, they got it coming. It's her, man. But uh, this is the girl that was in, uh, I think Shay Mitchell's her name. She was in that possession of Hannah Grace. And I was like, oh. I'd like to see her in something better, man, because yeah. she is good. And this is it right here. Yeah. Uh, the girl that plays Beck is uh, 
is really good in here, man, because uh, there's a brief moment they give her her own narration, mm -hmm. and they and they don't you know that you get to sit sit back and see why she does certain things that she does. Yeah. And honestly, there are even moments where and see, I, I just another thing I love to listen to. To listen to uh, Joe talk about it, you make man, that's fucked up what she did, man. Fuck that bitch, man. And then you realize, no, that's normal, man. <laughs> man, stop talking to me. Shut up. <laughs> Leave me alone. Because <laughs> I'm ready to kill this chick. It's like, no, that's normal, man. She's just a person like everybody else who does stupid things and, and, and are self-destructive sometimes. And we've yeah. all done it. And you, yeah, you always have to look and see why is it? Why does it seem really bad what she's doing? And it's because there's a guy invading her privacy all the time, following her, looking at her phone, looking at things she does. Like people do this stuff normally. The thing is, is that like in the early days of a, of a relationship, before you really solidify certain things, she she takes certain liberties with that. But it's like this dude's not even supposed to know. I know. You know what I'm saying? I know. <laughs> I know. This, this guy's a complete asshole, man. And the more he talks, the more you're like, oh, okay, well, I get it, Joe. And it's like, nah, nah, man, this guy's sick. And by the time it's done, it is a it is a very twisted thing. That it happens. really is. I, I felt kind of ill when, when when you got to the end. And I loved it. It made me feel oh, repulsed, I and I, I know, loved it, man. I, I was like, I okay, now see, this is what you should do. <laughs> I know. I swear I know. to God, y'all like, taking any other like, steps? Y'all, y'all have balls. I got to give it to you. I, I want to throw up right now, but you have balls. <laughs> it it really exposes everybody's reliance on social media and how easy it is to infiltrate somebody's life through that. You were telling me about that the other day, and I, yeah, and I saw exactly what you were talking mm -hmm. about. In fact, that comment that you made was the one that made me want to go see this. Oh, which, oh, okay. When we were talking about how easy it is to piece, piece people's uh, mm -hmm. uh, lives together mm -hmm. all through social media. Yeah, because everybody, they like to chronicle their life on social media. The way he got into her apartment, I was so like, oh, fuck, that's brilliant. Anyone could do that. It's a scary thing, man, because I don't think it's too far-fetched. No, not at all. Like, you watching all these things where people are doing magic on the internet, all these hackers and shit. It don't take that much. It, it really doesn't take that much. It's uh, uh, John um, Stamos. John Stamos, man, he was good. Yeah. He was good in this. He plays a, plays a, a, a therapist. therapist, and uh, I, I really liked him in there. You know, this is one where he grew a beard and played against that handsome type himself. Yeah, he didn't know, you know what? She said he looks, he looks old, and I'm, you know, he looks older. I mean, he is. He's, he's like 50. He's yeah, he's fifty something, but he's but he looks great. In the, he just no, that. I was thinking him as Zac Efron one <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I regret with this, because even with the shortcomings of uh, what I saw as shortcomings at, at at one time before, ended up working into the story. Mm -hmm. Only thing I have to say, man, that ending was so messed up psychologically that, uh, and it, and it gets more disturbing as things happen, man. I'm talking about. The sick things that stalkers do, they just show the stuff that they collect. Yeah. And it's like, wow, man, you were, you, I, I'm repulsed at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just sanitary things. I mean, it's, I know. it's, it's fucking sick, I, man. I, yeah, it, it, there's sort of that, if I knew you had all this, I don't think I ever would have rooted for you. No, no, and I, you know, and I, no, that's, you didn't, you didn't know you had the treasure trove of that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa, man, I, I, I'm glad they kept that. Mm. You know, this, it's such a psychological mind fuck at the end that, uh, they want to do a season two. That's the that's the only thing. Yeah, that, like, that 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 tease to season two, soap like, opera trashy. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, this this happens so often. So it's like, yeah, you just have to just go like, all right, well, it has a it has a a, a great first season and no second season. I'll be willing to see what they do with a <laughs> second course. season if they can. Of course, you have to see. Of course, e yeah. even even in knowing that it might be a train wreck. If it's gonna be a train wreck, you gotta at least witness the beginning of it to say, all right. I will not follow this further. Yeah, yeah. and I, I just hope that what they do, because I don't, I mean, that was a that was an impactful ending that they had. They made a statement about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, feminism, feminism gone wrong. Um, you know, uh, the psychology of, of of a stalker. I mean, there are a lot of things that were covered here. Uh, masculinity gone wrong. I mean, there's a you know, masculin masculinity in question. There's a lot of stuff here that was done, it was done just right. Now that tease at the end is like, okay, now that we're doing, going to some telenovela shit here. <laughs> right. You know, you know, I, don't, I don't know how, I don't know how this is gonna play out. I'm gonna watch it to see how y'all either do it uh -huh. or, or fuck, fuck it up. up. Yeah. Uh, Sharonda, I wanna bring, as a woman, I wanna bring you up real quick, cause you were one of the people who was saying, are we gonna talk about this? Come, just come up real quick, cause as a woman, I don't want you to spoil anything, but 
everything that we've seen in right here and being that it's so easy for women to be you know more women are victims of stalking than men right now yeah. I, be, I believe i don't oh, i don't yeah. have, i'm just i'm being trump right now i'm just pulling numbers out my ass i mean we got a stalker but you know <laughs> yeah yeah we got we got a few <laughs> so, true <laughs> yeah so fuck you bitches <laughs> no, but um it was super disturbing but i loved it it was so so good um, I did not root for Joe at all. Okay, there's a, there was never a point. No. Okay. No, I thought he was a little nutty. In fact, he reminded me of Ted Bundy from the beginning. Yeah. Hey, I think that's yeah. what they meant, too. That's why I brought that up. So you didn't root, root, root for him at all? No. Uh, you know, and I thought that the, the point would be that a lot of women would. No. At least not for me, but I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> so you stalk people, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got a boyfriend. Does he know? No, I just, thought, I just thought it showcased that everyone had like some type of mental instability going mm-hmm. on. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. no one was really normal except like the bigger guy that he yeah. worked with. Uh, but no, no, I, it, that's that's interesting. That's interesting because I, you know, I thought that shit. I thought I was somebody. I thought like I, I said, man. Well, I, you know, I, I fell for Joe a little bit, but not as much as these women out here. But no, you didn't at all. I don't understand the romantic, the romanticizing of. Joe but that's another reason why I asked because I thought it might could be that way with you because for where we're looking at it uh, from my point of view it's like we can fall for those things a little bit easier this is probably really more frightening for you because it's more possible right exactly uh, that's true started kind of spiraling out of control once he kind of entered her life and I would have thought that she would have kind of sensed it or picked something up a little well there's the jealousy of course yeah. you know that the constant you know let me see your phone uh, catching him in places where he probably yeah. shouldn't have been. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't yeah. Care. I, I accidentally running into somebody <laughs> once is one thing. For but five two times. Th- yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Hey, New York is I big. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. And I want to thank everybody out there who uh, pushed this uh, on me. Like this would this this is I, this a full price, no doubt. I don't know what you would say. Oh, absolutely a full price. It's it's been a while since I've seen a show that I. I really have binged like that. And this was that show where I'd be at work and I'd be thinking about, I want to get home because I could probably watch, watch an episode before I got to yeah. get out to the studio. This was not hard to binge at all, man. I started at 2.30 in the morning last night. Oh, finished, geez. And finished, oh, wow. Yeah, and finished today, man. Well, it was, it's a good thing it's only 10 episodes. It was only 10 episodes. And, that's and they're what, only about 42 minutes. And I'm glad Marvel's getting your ass. I never thought I would say this about Marvel. I'm glad you're taking your ass out of here because this just goes to show how y'all mm-hmm. were just filling in time. Yeah. Like, I just got through watching The Punisher, 13 episodes. It needed less episodes than this. Yeah. This knew how to make every episode oh, count. count. Yeah. Man. Every bit of information count, man. This even, is why television is great. Even you think doesn't count, later counts. Yeah. For Netflix and Lifetime, you know what? Uh, for you know, I applaud Lifetime for taking the risk with this and doing it. I, I applaud Netflix for taking it and putting it out there and making it more aware for people, because uh, this is what this is what good streaming, not just television. This is what good streaming is about. Yeah. This is what binging is about. This is this is something that really fits this new age of entertainment. What we have here in storytelling. Ten episodes and every one of them were great, man. I was hooked the whole time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I, I, what would you give it if you had to give it some? A high full price. A high full price. Yeah. All right then. Yeah, I benched this uh, on a Sunday and knocked couldn't it out. stop. <laughs> yeah. Knocked it out. It was so good. Yeah. Joe said, "Did you say high full price?" <laughs> <laughs> if you like this series, if you, and if you haven't watched it, watch it. If you like it for one particular thing that I'm talking about, and that is, you have stories told through the narration of somebody who is delusional. Ah. I love that because Me that too. is what made this. Me too. I, there, that, that, now there are a lot more, but I'm just going to hit you hit you with uh, four movies here that go along those lines where you don't know what to think or, better yet, you're thinking ahead of that person saying, man, look, you fuck it up. <laughs> I don't care what you say. <laughs> we need all the love that we can get. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. And if you really love us, then check out our main site, DoubleToasted.com, where not only can you find a longer form version of this video, but also the streams that we do almost every night of the week. Support us at DTMerch.com. Get a shirt or something. And remember to always stay toasty. <laughs> <laughs>